when we try to assess for core stability or dynamic stability, sometimes the typical tests you might do, we're limited by sometimes our, our belly. So one easy test that we can do is the single limb stance test. So the simplest form of it, I'd ask Nora to try to, um, with your feet in a neutral stance, bring one foot up to 90 degrees and try to hold it up there for 10 seconds. As the assessor, what I'd be looking for is, one, can she hold it for 10 seconds? Two, does she have any lateral sway to sort of compensate? Um, and is, do the hips go up or down? So you can come on down, nice job. Let's try it on the other side. This one seems easier for you. Yeah. <laughs> she has a little bit less of that lateral sway. Her hip is not hiking as much. So we know that there's a little bit of that right-sided weakness and come back down. I apologize, left-sided weakness when she was only on the left side. This can be challenged if that's easy for both. You can maybe have you close your eyes to try it again, standing on your left leg. So you can see she's a little bit more challenged with this by her sway. You can see like it, she's working a little harder. Does that seem harder, Nora? Yes, definitely. <laughs> and then switch. A little bit more solid on this side. Yep. Right side down that. Good, and then go down. So that's one way. And the third way, you can keep your eyes open. We have her hold a kettlebell in a suitcase carry. And we'll try again for about the 10 seconds. That actually helps to compensate you a little it does. bit. It helps, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this would be a good exercise to use towards that dysfunction or that asymmetry that we found. And then you can switch sides. Perfect. So we talked a lot that pelvic positioning, pelvic height, core strength, really tells us a lot about how the back pain might be feeling. So this is just an assessment that we can do when we're seeing somebody stand on one leg, how, how their stability is when they're in that one sort of single stance position. Okay, so for those of you who are a little bit more advanced, who might be ready to um, add a little bit of extra resistance to your hinge pattern, we would recommend um, a deadlifting a kettlebell. Kettlebells are ergonomically really friendly to the body, meaning you can keep them close to you, um, whereas like a barbell or a dumbbell you may not be able to hold so securely, maybe a little bit further away from you. So the closer we can keep the load, the resistance to your body, the more efficient you're gonna be at lifting it. So when you approach the kettlebell to deadlift it, you're gonna make sure that your feet are on either side and you wanna have the handle, so come even a little bit closer, and you wanna have the handle pretty close to you. So you may not actually be able to see it from here because if it's <laughs> it's not there. It is there, I promise. So if you set it up there, you yeah. know it's there and it helps if you have a mirror too. Um, so it's the same kind of setup as we did with the wall hinge. So what you're gonna to try to do is reach the hips back and what I want you to do is reach directly down. Don't look down, look down, look a little bit in front of you and bend your knees just a little bit more. Bend your knees just a little bit more, a little bit more, a little more. Oh. Yep. <laughs> so in that position, what we're looking for is hip, uh, shoulders to be a little bit higher than the hips and hips to be a little bit higher than the knees. And I want you to think about pulling that handle apart on the kettlebell. So almost trying to like rip it in half so that you get your lats engaged and shorten your lats. Yep. And then from there, you're going to stand up nice and tall, keeping that kettlebell nice and close to you. And then you're going to pattern it exactly the way, same way down. So that kettlebell is traveled straight back down to the floor till it hits the floor. Yep and then stand up nice and tall again. Good. If you wanna pattern your breathing with this, if you're not really sure how to breathe with this, what helps a lot of times is um, inhaling down and then exhaling to stand up. So exhaling on exertion is a really helpful pattern to coordinate our core and pelvic floor. Awesome, and you'll notice your toes are popping up a little bit on that side. <laughs> See that a lot? Yep. Yeah. Good. Nice and tall. My toes are always standing. Yeah, of course. Good. Awesome. Good job. So this is a great way to strengthen the posterior chain muscles, like into the glutes and hamstrings, which can become um, a little bit sleepy during pregnancy. So this is a great movement pattern that um, you know you're using about 26 pounds, but we can definitely go um, a lot heavier or a little bit lighter if needed.